G'day, I'm Paul. So, are you sick of seeing Tesla Model Ys on the road? Want something a little bit different in your life? Well, uh, the Euros are finally producing these things. They're becoming more affordable and a little more in line with what we're seeing in the market today. This is the BMW iX1. It's a fully electric version of the X1, so it does still share an internal combustion platform, but Looks like a normal car, it doesn't look like a science experiment. This competes with things like the Volvo XC40, the Tesla Model Y, the Mercedes-Benz EQA. That segment is starting to get a little fuller as we speak. And this one here is in one spec for Australia, priced at just under $85,000. Today we're going to do a detailed review of this car, so if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes on the screen, or if you are on YouTube, scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel so you can find out every single time we drive a green mean machine let's talk exterior so you've got 10 external colors to pick from love this green you really don't see many sort of adventurous colors from the germans and i, I love that they've got this sort of fairly creative color and i'll show you when we go around the side how they've offset uh, some of the vehicles other colors with it um, so uh, blue around the bmw badge there closed off grill because electric um, obviously this is here for the purposes of cooling the internal combustion engine but for the purposes of cooling the battery and the electric motors you've basically got vents down the bottom here that open and close as required camera down the bottom here and the radar is stuck behind this little section uh, full led headlights matrix led so you get great vision at night time and you can run them in high beam to not blind other drivers a little bit of aero down the side there and then let's whip around to the side here so down here you've got a set of 19 inch alloy wheels you can also option a bigger 20 inch alloy wheel if you want uh, machine finish on the outside there and then a graphite finish on the inside this is what i was talking about with the offset color so you've got the green body color there but then sort of duck gray or something like that uh, within that section so i think that is a really cool look and Love the experimentation there with a few different colors to make this really pop. Uh, up the top here, you have brush color there on the wing mirror with an indicator built into there, camera on the side, flush door handles, which we're seeing now as a trend with BMWs, chrome on the outside of the windows there, no privacy glass, which I find really strange. Uh, moonroof up the top there, then come to the back with me. Have a look at this design. They've kind of, I don't know what this is. They've, they've tried to maximize the amount of boot space by sort of not tapering this off all that quickly. So you've got this design that sort of comes around the back there, drops off, and then the tail lights sort of have this 3D effect to them. And I think they look really cool, especially here on the side where you've got uh, all of those triangles as well. So yeah, really nice setup around the back there, I reckon. Uh, another BMW logo there with the blue edging ix1 badge down there x drive 30 which is the only spec we get here in australia brake light integrated into there with a shark fin aerial up the top well i don't know what sort of animal that is it's like a dolphin no actually not even a dolphin i don't know it's an animal style <laughs> aerial up the back there um, let me know what you reckon about the design in the comments section below i think it actually looks uh, pretty nice and i love the fact that with uh, some of bmw's electric vehicles they you know obviously sharing an internal combustion platform doesn't give you the efficiencies that you need with an electric vehicle but it does mean that it does look normal which i'm a big fan of so let me know what you reckon in the comments section below do you like the look of this what do you think about it as a competitor to those other vehicles i mentioned earlier so we are inside the ix1 we'll start off with the key so you've got the bmw logo there unlock, boot, the diamond for activating the lights and uh, blank on the back there. It's a proximity sensing key, so you can leave that in your pocket. And then once you're inside, your push button start is just here. Gotta say, I love the look of this interior. They have done such a good job with this. Previous generation of the X1, it just looked kind of not very nice inside the cabin, but this looks great. I'm personally a fan of wood grain and I really like the way that they've put this across the dash here. You can even see this material on the seats and stuff is like a a brown leather of some sort so it looks just yeah really nice in my opinion uh, and then in addition to that uh, I guess because EV they try and maximize storage and stuff and you can see here they've gone to town with storage around the cabin so um, yeah I think this is a uh, very nice looking setup love these new buttons on the steering wheel as well um, now what about your touch points so uh, that is kind of firm but soft and then same story on the door there how firm are they got our durometer we've tested the main surfaces in this cabin if you want to see how this car compares to others that we've tested before we'll look at the link in the description below what about our build quality let's give this a little shake there that all feels nice and solid and this is our door slam 
Now let's talk infotainment. So curved display, which is what BMW has been rolling out to a lot of its vehicles recently. And I really like that because it is very high tech looking and it's not just a standard double screen display. It has a bit more substance to it. You have buttons on the side here as shortcuts, but have a look at this. There is no traditional iDrive controller, which is really interesting. I've been playing with it for a little while now and you do get used to it, but it is just something a little bit different. So OS 8, which means you get the configurable displays here on the screen that you can whip through. You have inbuilt satellite navigation. In addition to that, it comes standard with a 12 speaker Harman Kardon branded sound system. It's a pretty good sound system as well. Uh, on the smartphone mirroring front, you have both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I'll show you what Apple CarPlay looks like. There it is there, wireless setup, takes up the full screen, nice and quick and snappy as well, which is good. And this is what Android Auto looks like. So same story as CarPlay, full screen integration there configurable section off to the side doesn't seem to do much it's a bit slow and laggy uh, but yeah outside of that it looks uh, pretty straightforward ahead of the driver here you also have another display here and you can actually do a bit of configuration here so you can change what's displayed in the center and also the general layout along with everything that is displayed in the head-up display it's a really neat and easy system to use which i really like now let's talk safety tech. So you have autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian detection. You have an auto dimming rear vision mirror. You have a lane departure warning with a lane keeping assist. And this actually has a semi-autonomous steering function, which we'll test later on. Blind spot monitoring built into the wing mirror, rear cross traffic alert. You have the drive recorder function, which acts as a dash cam for you. And then you also have a 360 camera. I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, yeah, so the quality of that isn't amazing gives you okay visibility but you can see the quality is just a tiny bit sort of uh, grainy and not amazing um, it's not too bad there on that closer up view so yeah look the camera is good but i think it could be just a little bit better this is what the horn sounds like okay let's chat practicality and we'll start off with your connectivity so you've got two usb c ports here 12 volt outlet wireless phone charger but i love this so if you stick your phone in there it kind of moves around everywhere but then you have this it's like a roller coaster, you know, when they put that thing on you so you don't fall out of it. You basically just wedge that forward and then it keeps the phone in position there, which I think is a really great feature. So uh, very good to see that. What about your coffee cup? So it can fit down there, but there are no teeth and it's quite a deep hole. So it might delid your, might end up delidding your coffee cup if you're not too careful. And what about your water bottle? It fits in there without any dramas, but again, it sort of just moves around a little bit. Uh, water bottle fits inside the door without too many problems. And then our bigger water bottle, give that a crack, fits inside the door too. Excellent news. Other storage, you've got this little slot here. I don't actually know what you would fit in there. Maybe a number of, a small number of keys or something like that. Uh, but you do have stacks of storage down here, which is really good to see. And then you also have a glove box over here as well that is actually pretty reasonably sized. Comfort, so you have dual zone automatic climate control. Unfortunately with OS8, you get this sort of system where you have to go into the climate menu. There are no physical buttons. You know, I'm sure it's something you get used to, or alternatively, you can just use uh, a voice recognition command to, to blurt out the temperature and stuff that you want to set. You do also have heated seats for the front row. Electric seat adjustments, you can go forwards, backwards, backrest can go forwards and backwards. You have lumbar adjustment. You can bring the seat up and down. You also have a massage as well which is fun seats are pretty comfy too perforated and you can select a number of different color options for the seats too steering offers both tilt and reach adjustment and on our reach test all of that stuff is not too bad to reach okay second row of the ix1 so not a huge amount of knee room toe room is okay headroom is okay as well uh, you've got air vents back here you have map pockets two usb-c outlets you've got isofix points and three top tether points as well center armrest here with two cup holders little rubber teeth in there to hold everything in place this fits inside the door as well which is good to see now the all-important window test so it's auto up and down so close 
Now let's talk cargo space. So in its standard configuration here, you've got 490 litres to work with. It's not a huge amount. If you compare this to something like a Model Y, there is significantly more room in a Model Y. And the other downside as well to this being an internal combustion platform is that you don't get a great deal of storage under here. So you do have a little bit of room, but you can see there, once you put a cable or two in, it kind of just takes up that entire space. So um, yeah, that is something worth keeping in mind. But you do have a couple of little storage slots on the side there. You've got a 12 volt outlet hidden under here. I'll show you what it looks like with our bags in. So that's the laptop bag. And then there's the suitcase. Now, if you do want a little bit more space though, you can drop the second row. Disappointingly, you can't do that from here. So you're gonna go around the side, crack the door open, and then drop the seat up this side as well. And that expands the space to 1,490 litres, but you can see here as well that it's not a flat floor, so it comes along and then it has to climb. So yeah, I think it's an okay use of space, but it definitely could be better. Now, before we go for a drive, I wanted to run you through the electric part of things. So you have a 65 kilowatt hour battery. That's roughly 65 kilowatt hours usable. You have both AC and DC charging. AC, you can actually charge up to three phase 22 kilowatt, which is pretty impressive. And then on the DC front, it'll do up to 130 kilowatts with an average of about 100 kilowatts. Not amazing in my opinion. I think it could be much sort of quicker than that, especially when you look at some of the other competitors in the segment. Um, they are starting to offer much faster charging paces there. So uh, that is worth keeping in mind. Driving range of around 440 kilometers on the WLTP cycle, and then it uses a lithium ion battery. Okay, so we've just hit the road in the iX1. It is so wet outside and it's all of 10 degrees as well. So it is bloody freezing. Um, so that's gonna limit uh, you know, what we can do today, but I'll run you through everything that I possibly can. Uh, the iX1 in its entire range is only available as all-wheel drive. So uh, that means you get one motor on the front axle, one motor on the rear axle, and that offers a combined power output of 230 kilowatts and just under 500 newton meters of torque. Uh, it's a pretty sort of decent number, and for a vehicle this size, it gives you that reasonable acceleration that you need and um, everything is sort of pretty easy and straightforward. Uh, one thing that I like is you get a couple of options when it comes to regen depending on the drive mode that you're in. So when you roll out of the throttle and you don't have anything selected, it will basically just coast and it won't do any regen at all. And then when you go for the brake pedal, it'll actually start going into regen and then will uh, come to a stop just as you normally would with the brake pedal. But then what you can do is flick your drive selector down into B mode. And then when you roll out of the throttle, you can actually kind of like a Tesla or a Nissan Leaf, it'll come to a full stop and then you're ready to go. So I do love that you have those options available and it is super easy to switch on and off. You don't need to faff around with anything. It just works, which is great. Now, what does all that feel like behind the wheel? It has a really nice and solid punch. Given it's not big and it doesn't have an enormous battery, it actually has a really, really sort of healthy kick in the back, which is uh, something I really like about it. Um, it is fascinating though. It is very much front wheel drive oriented and I don't really understand why they've done that given BMW's philosophy is very much rear wheel drive and, and sportiness. This on the other hand, if you do get on the throttle and you surprise it and because it is wet, it's gonna be easy to do here. but. I can feel the, the front wheels slipping there in, in, in their sort of entirety. And if I go over to uh, sport mode, actually, where stability control is disabled and just stand on it, you can actually feel those front wheels slipping. So yeah, I do think that they could have gone down the path of more of a rear bias setup, but ultimately this is what they've chosen. And then when you are driving uh, just normally, it will actually just be sending torque to the front axle. It doesn't really sort of activate the rear axle at all. It decouples it from service until it's required. Now, you would have noticed just there when I got on the throttle, it was making some funny sounds. So hear that? This is the uh, Hans Zimmer uh, production notes they've put together for it and it's quite fascinating if you go into my modes you can actually change to different sound styles and driving styles so if I go to efficient basically dulls some of the the air conditioning and also changes the noise so you get less noise there and then if we go over to this one which I thought was interesting expressive have a listen to this <laughs> sounds like you're on like a theme show or something. Um, and then what else have we got here? Relax, we'll give that a crack. Oh, that's like nothing, that's great, I like that one. And then digital art. Oh, look at that, that all lights up. 
Yeah, cool. So you have a couple of uh, options there to play with. I'm very interested if you have bought one of these, whether you have ever touched any of these, <laughs> let me know in the comments section below. Now let's talk efficiency. So BMW claims that it uses a combined around 17 kilowatt hours per 100 Ks. Uh, we are currently sitting on since factory 19.3 really not very efficient. If you have a look at uh, Model Y, for example, um, the rear wheel drive version is using like 13 or 14, the long range slightly more than that, but all significantly less than this. So I think it just shows you that this is the compromise that you make with vehicles that are on an internal combustion platform. You don't quite have that level of efficiency. Okay, time to hit our sine wave. So we do these at 130 k's an hour. It gives us an indication of what this vehicle is like when you're doing things like overtaking on a country road and 130 is the maximum speed limit here in Australia. Oh my god it is so wet. All right uh, here we go. That's really nice and compliant. So this vehicle shares a platform with the internal combustion X1 and I think they've done a really good job there of managing the extra weight that you get here with the full electric platform. So it, it is actually quite nice. Even in and around the city the ride is actually quite reasonable. So it's not, uh, not too busy, it's not too firm, it's not too soft. It, uh, it's kind of un-BMW, it doesn't feel overly firm even on these wheels, so I think they've done a great job there with the ride. Okay, bumpy road time, so worst road in Australia, we do this one at 90 k's an hour, it's just a really good indication of what the vehicle is like if you head to the country and hit some corrugations. Okie dokie, here comes our condensed sine wave as well, this shakes the bejesus out of the car. It's actually really good. It is surprising that despite this being on such big wheels, it is doing a remarkably good job here. They've been able to soften it up enough to, to cope with this type of road, but not go too soft so that it becomes unruly and doesn't have body control. So yeah, very impressive. Okay, let's go for a sporty drive. So I'm going to put this into sport mode. And then uh, in sport mode, you have a number of different settings there you can choose in terms of steering feel and also the drivetrain. It is very wet today, so I'm not gonna be able to sort of go too crazy, but we'll see how it goes. I like that level of regen there in the sport mode as well. So yeah, look, it does sort of surge a little bit of torque to the rear every now and then, but you know, I'm really just not loving the way this feels behind the wheel. They've, They've tried to dial in a lot of sharpness in this steering and it just causes it to feel a little bit too darty for the size of the vehicle. And as a result of that, it does what the Tesla Model Y performance does, which is when you turn in, you get that rear left wheel unloading and it just really doesn't feel overly natural. And the brakes I also don't love either. They've gone with, uh, with one of those brake pedals that will resist uh, the uneven sort of a stopping feel that you get over things like our tram tracks just there, which is what um, something like a Model Y suffers from. But the feel just isn't there in that brake pedal and it just doesn't match what the vehicle is actually doing. So yeah, I don't know, it's just not very confidence inspiring. Even earlier when it was a bit drier, like it is nice and fast and everything, but even earlier when it was a bit drier, I just didn't feel confident pushing it and it just always felt like it was just doing stuff in the background that didn't really love. We've got a GLC here at the moment uh, and I'm just able to drive that a whole lot quicker than this even in the wet because it just feels far more confidence inspiring. Uh, I think this steering needs a lot of work. Uh, in sport mode it's good but when you switch it back to comfort it is just very vague and, and it just doesn't really know what it's doing. So yeah look I think uh, they've done an okay job with this but I just don't think it really feels like a BMW to drive quickly. Now what about your road noise? Um, look you do get a little bit coming into the cabin but it's not the end of the world. You do have a lot of glass around here so it does sort of reverberate a little but we did take some measurements on our calibrated sound meter so if you do want to see how this car compares to others that we've tested before have a look at the link in the description below. You also have a turning circle of 11.9 meters and should you be interested in it a brake towing capacity of 1200 kilos. Okay, time to test our semi-autonomous systems here. So do this at 70 k's an hour and I use the three outer lanes to see how well it'll hold the lane. And typically the, the more banking angle we have, the more representative it is of how it will perform out on the open road when you do negotiate a tighter turn. So pop this on to 70 k's an hour and then also change the mode to the assisted driving mode. You can see there's a steering wheel that pops up there. So 
let's see how it goes. So in this first lane here, it's doing a great job. It's basically staying dead center in that lane, which is awesome. I'll jump over to the next lane. Okie dokie, so that has now activated. It's holding itself nicely in that lane. No dramas there at all. Like that too, so if I let go of the steering wheel and it wants me to put my hands back on, that goes orange, but it also flashes these lights here as well. I'm actually curious to see what happens if I just continue ignoring that. Let's see what it does. And you definitely should not be doing this on uh, the open road, but we're safe here. There you go, so it flashes red as well, which is cool. All right, uh, we'll jump over to the outer lane. So this is the hardest one for it to master. See how this goes. Just gonna wait for that to activate. It says you can lift off the accelerator. Okay, it hasn't, yeah, there we go. So it's detected that. Nice, that is holding that beautifully. Fantastic, sensational job BMW. Nicely done. Okay, time to do a little bit of performance testing. Um, so obviously it is very wet at the moment, so this is going to be very interesting. Uh, before we jump into that though, um, I just wanted to mention Help Me Car Expert. We've drawn some inspiration from our friends at CarWow. Uh, basically, we are a big company. We have a lot of connections with dealers and are able to get you really good deals on vehicles that are in stock at the moment. So all you need to do is head to Google and type in Help Me Car Expert to be taken to the Car Expert website. And we'll be able to take care of the rest from there. Uh, now, I'm going to put this into sport mode and I'll turn stability control off just so it can have a little bit of slip off the line there. We're gonna go all the way through to 120 and um, I guess we'll just see what happens. I've left it in B mode because it'll just hold still off the line there and I'll just basically stamp on the throttle and um, we'll see what, uh, what comes about. So here we go. Not bad there, off the line. Alrighty. Actually moving okay there, so 100 k's an hour and 120, so we'll come to a stop. It's actually hoofing along okay, so the official 0 to 100 time is 5.6 seconds. Let's have a look at how we went just then. 5.73, not bad for the wet, which is great. And then 80 to 120 took 3.96 seconds. So still quite eager and strong in that mid band, which is awesome, uh, which shows you that it has a fair bit of punch there, which is good. So uh, let's go back and do a break. Look, the break, unfortunately, it's just gonna be raining all day. So obviously this is going to be a wet result, but I'll give it a shot anyway to see how it goes. Okay, here we go. Our break from 100. <laughs> Okie dokie. So gonna be breaking from just above 100. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Actually didn't feel too bad to be honest. Let's have a look at what the number was. Like it is properly wet. Our 100 to zero was 3.31 seconds and 45.9 meters. So this pretty much stops in the sopping wet as quickly as some of the big SUVs we tested recently stop in the dry. So if you do want to see our SUV mega test videos, click up here to watch those. So pretty impressive um, stopping distance there, given it is as wet as it is at the moment. So um, yeah, not a bad effort. Now I did actually notice just then stability control was off. So I'll give that one more crack just to make sure that that didn't affect our stopping distance. I'll get this back up to 100. Alrighty, here we go. Oh, so that time around 47 meters, so slightly longer. That was weird. So with stability control off, it stopped slightly quicker. Could just be an anomaly there, but um, yeah, still a pretty decent stopping distance in the wet, in my opinion. And now, how quickly will it go in reverse? A bit of clean the back window there. Here we go. All right, I'll stand on the throttle. Oh. <laughs> Holy crap, that was quick. Um, okay, so 44, 5, 45 kilometers an hour. So BMW iX1, uh, as a competitor in this space, a fully electric, small SUV, BMW has done a good job with getting all the battery tech in there and making it fun to drive in a straight line. I think it is entirely let down though by the handling. I don't know what they've done to the steering there and, and just the way that it goes through corners. I'm just not entirely convinced with. Hopefully it is just a software thing because uh, a lot of that stuff is nowadays just driven by software. I do love though the technology inside the cabin, the way that it looks as well, it really feels 
nice and high end and premium. It's just something that you don't get in a vehicle like the Tesla Model Y. Uh, but on that flip side as well, it does feel pretty cramped in the second row there uh, compared to a Model Y. So yeah, look, I think the pricing is right for what it is and the range that you get. But ultimately, I think it is let down by the handling. It doesn't feel like a BMW behind the wheel, which is what I was hoping to get when you drive an electric BMW like some of the others that they've recently produced. So have you bought one? Let me know in the comments section below. What do you think? How's it going for you? Are you enjoying it? Why did you pick this over some of the other competitors in this segment? I'm keen for your feedback, so let me know down there. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. But until next time, take it easy.